Yesterday we started looking at Genesis chapter 2 and we noted that it presents a second sort of zoomed in account of creation. We saw that God created Adam out of dust uh, and then animated him by giving him the breath of life. And I said it's both, uh, on the one hand it's encouraging because God is creating Adam and giving him life and, and humankind is created in God's image. On the other hand, there's a sense that it's, it's dust and that's very humbling. And we talked about how that ties back into Ash Wednesday and all of that. So today, moving on, yesterday I read uh, Genesis 2.7. Today I'm going to read uh, Genesis 2.8 and 9. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Uh, in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So this is the first mention of a garden, the Garden of Eden. Um, in Genesis 1, God creates everything, and here it's sort of drilled down that there's uh, this particular place. God creates everything and, and puts, you know, humans in charge. In this particular place, we see that uh, God had given uh, an opportunity for a, a pristine, perfect place. It's the garden. But man is supposed to subdue the rest of creation and steward the rest of creation, and it's sort of, you know, a little bit unformed. So what we get here, this is the first reference we get to a garden, and uh, it's going to be the major theme. And so throughout, even in the Middle Ages, when uh, Christians thought of the, the perfect place, right, the ideal place, the utopian place, it was a garden. Today, the idea of, of heaven has this more idea of, you know, sitting in our clouds up in, in the skies and, you know, all of that. That's more the imagery. But uh, the imagery before that was of a garden. This was the idyllic place. So uh, Adam, or see, God puts Adam, uh, the story here is that Adam is placed in this garden and it's wonderful. And there's trees, and the trees are good to look at, and the trees are good for food. Uh, the passage will go on, and it'll talk about the rivers there and all the precious gold and all the other things that are there. Eden is portrayed as this idyllic setting. And uh, the rest of the Bible is going to draw on this imagery. As a matter of fact, when we bookend this, so we've got Genesis 2, when we go to the very end of the Bible, when we go to the book of Revelation, we see this idea of a garden coming down out of heaven. We've got the same imagery. This is a garden in which God will dwell. And it says, um, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. So we've got, we, bookending the Bible, Genesis, and the beginning of Genesis, the end of Revelation is talking about a garden. So what does this mean for Genesis chapter 2? Uh, well, it means that we're getting a picture of life as it's supposed to be lived. Uh, as it will eventually be lived, life in a world without sin. And it's functioning and it's beautiful. Be encouraged. You're in Christ. That's the future. Have a good day.